Hello, 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 and welcome back again. Today I want us to look at the code and uh, also the data sheet for this microcontroller that we are using. And um, also because uh, in this code we are using a lot of reference to registers, like here for example. Uh, we get into the deal stills before, uh, like PR2 or P E R E, like this is interrupt uh, register, and um, yeah, uh, all of these uh, registers uh, is find found in the data sheets. So we can have a look uh, what they look like, and uh, yeah, and then uh, go from there. So this program that I'm using, it's called Micro C Pro. It's an advanced C compiler for PIC MCU. It's an old version, but I don't care too much for updating it because uh, my development board, it's uh, an old development board, so as you can see my program is not registered. You still get 2 kilobytes, kilowords of uh, programming memory. So you know, the microcontroller has program words, as you can see here I'm pointing. And I've used 830, that's 10% of the microcontrollers. So uh, let's just change his name. So this is our Paul and Beam project. Big 16F887 microcontroller. And uh, we used an eSpeak 5 development board. As for settings, we can say that uh, no pull ups. And we use uh, LCD display. So what you see first here is uh, related to the, the LCD module. So we can look at the library here for that. So we find the LCD module and all its functions in the library. So if you do an initialization so here we have that function. Um, uh, not always. I will not always use uh, library functions because sometimes they don't behave like I want to, and that's okay. But um, this one is very good because uh, this is all about flipping bits up and down just to get some text on the screen. So yeah, save a lot of time. Anyway, uh, these are the global variables and. They must be defined before using this function. So that's what I've done here. And they also come with an example here. So, and this is the direction of, uh, of the signals to the LCD. So this is enable. I think this is reset. So direction means uh, what direction is the um, signal going? Is port B bit 4? Is that a input or an output? So that's important. Always when you configure a port, you have to set the tree set register. So basically you set it up and then you call the initialization. You have uh, so you can write chars. Yes. So what do you have here is um, t four texts, microelectronica, ECB stuff and I want it on the screen so they put them in a uh, array so we can then use the LCD out and we say where on the screen it's gonna be and then or we attach the array so so here comes the interesting part and uh, this is measure distance function that I made specifically for this project so this uh, one has to do with uh, the ultrasonic uh, transducer get distance from the IC station that's the brand of that part ultrasonic transducer so we will have a look at that or we had a look at that actually last time so and here's the other one, set server position by setting the P, PWM value or uh, 
duty cycle. Yeah. This is a function I made so it was easier down the code. As you can see here. Here. I can just send a position and then the function will take care of that module. And to measure distance here, as you can see, I'm getting the distance to the ball and then storing it in a variable. And also I'm throwing away 8 of the 16 bits there. Anyway, so let's get back there. And one thing I did with this uh, function was to, to crop whatever comes in on this function set that if the value is higher or lower than a certain limit then uh, I will set the value myself or the, the function will set the value itself because if you set it below this value then uh, the, micro the server will make certain noises I don't think it's very good <laughs> you can hear the sprockets are they are slipping on each other and that's not good at all so and I see a problem here though uh, so if the value is lower than 40 we will set it to 40 so so <laughs> if it goes from 40 to 39 it doesn't jump up to 45 that it did it jumps back to 40 so or it stays at 40 so and same here so that was a problem I had so we are avoiding extreme server angles, angles. And the other thing here, this is related to the, this, the PVM register. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so we have our data sheet. So the only thing we have to do now is to find the PWM. And that's, as we talked about, it was the capture, compare, and PVM modules. And if we go in here, um, so here you have the CCP control and that's one register so we looked at last time to capture and PWM so and uh, also usually we should check that it actually is the specific microcontroller we have because this data sheet covers many devices in a device family so and this one is correct so in PVMW mode, we looked at this diagram here. Here, the first thing I set is CCPR1L. So let's have a look at that. CCPR1L, that will be the, the duty cycle. So, so, and uh, you don't set this part here because there's a note. It says that uh, this this register here is a uh, read-only register, so let's just ignore it. And then we also have to start a timer somewhere, and that is done in the initialization of this uh, microcontroller. So when I'm looking at this, I'm not completely sure why it says timer two here. Uh, maybe it's because we are looking at a different module. Aha, here it is. It's because it's an um, 8 bit timer. So, these are things you have to check though. And also, now we are just looking at this, uh, but sometimes uh, in the code, in the datasheet here, they tell you exactly what to do. Like here, for example, setup for PBM. Disable PVM pin output driver as an input for setting associated tree circuits. And then you have to find out where is that pin, and then you have to go back and look at the pin diagram and such. So here we are at the pin diagram. So this is the wrong microcontroller, as you can see. So this is the one, it's a PD package, it's 40 pin and it's 887. So let's find the CCP one here and that's at uh, RC2 but I think I'm using CCP2 here not completely sure at the moment no 
this is the PVM so this is CCP1 so that's it's RC2 the three state buffer for this uh, port C uh, every individual bits are set there and a zero that means that the pin is an output so the output driver of that pin that individual pin is then active so it's driving a pin so if you try to drive it from another place it will make a short circuit or a risk of it anyway in three state uh, that means if you set it to one that means you get a three state and then it's an input so you can read data from it uh, set the PVM period by loading a PR2 register I'm actually not doing that well I'm doing that but I'm only setting it to 255 so that's the full period so I get the full 10, 10 bits and then configure the CCP module for PVM mo mode and uh, by loading the CP, CCP2 con register with appropriate values am I doing that? Actually, it looks to like me that I'm, I forgot to set up this uh, CCP1 con. So I think we should uh, look at CCP1 con then. Yep, P1A, that's the port C, pin 1. So that was the one I set to 3 stay C as 1 here. There. So it's a bit tricky now <laughs> all these bits so you can actually individually access them like this if you do three states you refer to this register and you want the second bit that means uh, the bit one from zero because it starts at zero though so bit one and you set that to zero right uh, but can, there's many ways to do this so but in the, in the actual code this what happens is that a byte here from the program memory is then moved into this register in one go so if you do what I said three state C bit one equals zero then and now I hit the build button so it build and then there's something called assembly or listing so the difference here is that assembly you get assembly code that goes into the machine code or is made out of the machine code but the listing is actually here to show you the absolute address for every instruction and opcode So here you can see first I set three state C to one 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 zero. So that's what's happened in the code is that from the program memory FE as you can see that's the same as this number and uh, in assembly they say that two fifty four which is FE is moved into W register and thirty is I think. I'm not that good at this, but I think 30 means move L, W, and then it moves the W into the location of 3 state C. And I think that's what 87 stands for. So, as we, we made this second uh, one just to show you what happens if you access individual bits or pin that repre represents pins though so individual bit number one will be cleared so then you have a, a function in assembly called bit clear but then it refers to the address of the this register and then set it to one so so yeah but uh, uh, I like the coding in C though because I feel feel that it looks more it's easier to make a larger system instead of uh, having lots of clutter in the assembly but that's a matter of taste because these programs are not that big so 
you can get away with the assembly also but I'm not confident with that so, to be honest so the reason why this is working is probably because uh, P1A, P1M that are these two bits are 0, 0 and that means the P1A is assigned as capture compare input and the rest of these P1B are assigned as power pins and if uh, 3 to 2 here are 0, 0 because this is 0, 1, 2, 3 so that must be CCP1M CCP1M, 3, 2 if these are 0, 0 then this is single input output and P1A modulated so it's also a little bit strange though because uh, this is 0, 0, it's not 1, 1 I think. So why is it working then? <laughs> That's a puzzle for me right now because I can't see uh, CCP1 con. I can do a quick um, search for it. So let's go back. Uh, it could be a uh, And it also says you have to set CCP R1L and these you these are individual bits of another register. That's the silly part. That's why I've made a function here. So I can set the duty circle. Right? But to get ten bits, then I have to fill one register with eight values. And then I have to fill the two last bits to get the 10 bits into the CCP1 con register. And these two bits there. I don't know if there's a better way of doing this. So, so I don't know what you're thinking. Maybe I uh, don't know what this means. Right? So, first of all, so what is set? Set is basically 10 bits data like this and then you wonder maybe what does it mean that set is moved to or has these two arrows and then two well that's a bit shift operator so that means uh, the, all the bits are moved in two places right but shall I have the two last one no they are lost so when you ever move something out to the right or left, then everything that is on the edge here, these two last ones, they will be lost. So, so that's the thing what's happening here. So you, you are uh, left with the, these are the most significant bits. This value here is that um, moved into I can say is instead of equal, so don't mix it up with the with the C code. So and this value then is then moving to CP war one L. <laughs> so we get the most significant bits in there. So and you can see we're doing the same thing again, but only one bit. So what does set and all x3 mean well set is x is this 10 bits value and the and operator is a bitwise operator so a bitwise operator operates on all the individual bits or bitwise as it says and then you see it says and o3 x and that's this value here and if you do that the result is uh, x or 1 is always 1 and so on and x and uh, did I say or I meant and sorry x and 0 is always 0 and then you have the same here and then it says x and 1 x and 1 is always whatever is in x that's uh, boolean stuff. So, that's the answer. 
So what's happening here? We are actually, this is a way of masking away all those most significant bits that we have already stored in this register. So now we don't only want the two least significant bits. So that's what we have here now. But as you can see here, one of those bits goes into bit one of that register and the bit zero is the uh, okay, I see some mistakes here, oh. but that's okay, we'll, we'll fix that, maybe we'll see it already, so, oh, it's fun doing this video because I'm finding problems, so let's just mash it up again, and This is uh, O3. So, uh, can you see what I'm doing wrong here? Uh, oh, sorry, XX. So, well, first of all, I didn't finish this one because uh, it says move one to the left. So if you take this value here, let's just copy it, and then move it one to left, what do we have then? Then we have this value. Right. So the value here is now copied into bit 1. So that's how I isolate uh, this bit. If you know a better way, please let me know. So, enough about that. This works though, so there's no problem here. There's a problem here. I want to individual I want to isolate this bit now because this was the one we have before and now it's this one. So the answer is our mask is wrong. We need this bit. We need the very first bit. Yeah. So one hex is zero 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 one. So there you get your last bit though. Okay? And that one is copied into DC1B. So I <laughs> used that time on this already. So you found a mistake there. So you don't get the lawsuit then. So Yep. So now let's uh, compile it. Switch on the microcontroller. Then compile. Always do often compile because this um, if it doesn't work. The, by, by the way, this is the programmer. So put on the other camera. Show you. And as you can see here, it's up and running. And the topmost value there is the distance measurements. I haven't looked at that or we looked at that last time. And the bottom value here is the PWM or the, the set value for the... Yeah, so I'm basically just uh, printing out the set value before I'm sending it to the PWM. So yeah, that's it. And I think maybe the problem should uh, run smoother now because we fixed the least significant bit there. And if you ask me, that sounds much better. It was jerking around. And I think that was because we didn't get the least significant bit right. So let's change that in the code just for fun. Back to the problem we had. Now it's programming as the ball stops. So I'm waiting anxiously. Nothing happens. 
Really? Okay, so I did a reset and it started. Okay, you be the judge. Um, I think it bounces a little bit more if you look at the servo. This PBOM module has a. Uh, okay, now I see why it's working. Uh huh. So let's have a look at that. Why is it working? So let's get back to this thing. Let's find. Let's just copy that and then search for it. Mm hmm. So it calls this function here. Search for that. Okay, so this is the absolute memory address. So let's skip that part. Uh, yeah. Yep. There you go. So let's make another video about that. Okay, so I'm do redoing this video because uh, now I figure out what was wrong. Because when I look in the in my code there or in this code. I found that uh, I'm actually using the library. So, because we have a library here for PWM. So, all the initialization I have uh, actually... This was the first thing I did. I used the library, but then I th thought to myself, well, I don't want to use the library because it doesn't give me the frequencies that I want or the control that I want. So, uh, I'm not going to that, but, but this was about the resolution. This, here it is. So I was thinking, what happens to that CCP1 con register? Nothing. Nothing. But, don't be alarmed yet. Look at this. We have to find this part. So let's find that part. There's the end of it. So here it is. And here you can see what happens to CCPCon. So big 4 and 5 are set. And voila! If big 4 and 5 are set, what happens then? Yes, these two bits are still 0, 0. Yeah, right. So they set those bits to 1, 1. And probably that is because they, the, this library is assuming you're using it in 8-bit mode. So therefore these least significant bits are always high. So yeah, but still, it doesn't tell me uh, mm, what happens to this here at all. So let's just start off by using the library, but I ditched it. So, but anyway, it looks like I am initialization, initializing, initializing, <laughs> and maybe it's this PBM start. It's uh, all about. So let's find that. Okay, so it called PB1 start. So let's get to the top. Search forward. There. Oh, there you go. Not sure what um, what this means. I will have to look that up, but I think um, yeah, they are moving twelve into W, and then. Uh, they have this in, in, I think this, what this means, is uh, they have 12, and then whatever's in that register, only the bits of value cell 12 is then active, so let's have a look at that. So what they are saying is move, so what's uh, happening here, I think this is the value in bits 12 decimal is 
this in binary in binary now we, this value is in W registers and W register is then ORD and the rest is put in I I think <coughs> so uh, or, yeah, I is CC and com so what happens? Uh, I think whatever is in ccp one con like this is then ORD with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So the result is when you OR something with 0 then you get the uh, value well, that's there before nothing is changed. But if you set it then it will always be 1. So what you're doing is that you are and uh, they are or the assembly is setting bit one one in these two bits though. So let's have a look at that. What does this mean? So this means that we are in PVM mode and that's I really like that because this is the part that I forgot to set. So maybe I will uh, ditch the start thing here and then do this manually later but uh, for now it's working so but as you can see 1100 is PWM mode and P1C enough about those nitty gritty stuff though um, so let's look at the code so yeah you start off by initialization and then you have our functions and in all programs you have main and then in that main it's normal to have a infinite while loop so your program never ends yeah i was going to show you some uh, things i did earlier basically i'm just flipping bits on the ports directly and using delays as we talked about earlier using delays is not a good idea because you hold the program you can't do anything else so except when you're having trips though you can break free though but uh, yeah, I just wanted something on the output, so I just set the ports directly and then delayed for so long I wanted the post to be, and then changed the port back again, and so on. So yeah, let's uh, let's remove those uh, dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is our main program. It's very small. You have the initialization on the top. And then you come the infinite value while loop. So after you clear the screen and you shut off the cursor on the screen or the LCD screen, then we start the program. So we do a measurement, distance measurement, and this is a six, actually a sixteen, using only. 8 of 16 bits that's just for now so um, and then I have a my own function that I talked about earlier <coughs> that basically takes a 16 bit value and converts it into string so this is the string that comes back or is filled so I'm sending the address to that string to this function so I'm not actually sending the actual string I'm just copying it so when I get it back I then print it on the display it's very easy that way <coughs> and this is the position it's uh, first line and at start at 6 though, so as you have seen earlier and then the thing you have seen in my early videos is this part of the code I basically set the servo position by taking the distance and then scaling it a little bit down so you get like a uh, one eighth or something the servo position will change in proportion and now remember the word proportion because that is very central to this uh, control so I'm not using P control yet um, I'm simply connecting the distance to the servo and then I send the servo position to my PVM function and the servo will then move nothing more than that and also I'm also printing on the screen here 
what that server position is so I can see it visually. So for debugging and stuff. So yeah. So that was uh, what I did before. Now uh, we are wanting to do PID control, but uh, for now we don't have uh, that. So in, in PID control you have uh, the the way that it works. So you have a proportional part, which is then um, multiplied by an error, and that error is. Let me show you that what that is. The error is this is the target minus the actual position. And if you do that subtraction, you will get an error. So whenever the actual position is not the target, this value will be something else than zero. And this is called a proportional constant, uh, or, the, or the force you put on the ball. So force on the ball equals the error times error times some constant and so that means the force is then proportional to the error and that's what you can see when you rotate the ball or, or you move the ball and starts to regulate and also as you can see the ball almost never stops so we need more control but anyway to show you what I've done I, first I uh, calculate the error, so 85 is the target and distance is the actual position and then I get a integer value so I'm, I'm casting this though because uh, these are unsigned integers I want integers to get negative numbers and then when I had the error I multiply that with some constant and this is like 20% of the error is then converted into a correction. So this is the position, right? So then, then the beam is level. So uh, and if you get an error, then the beam will move in proportion to that error. And we're only using twenty percent. So now, right? So let's see what happens. Now we have compiled it and I have sent it. You can see this is only 10% of the error. And you can also see on the display here. The top part is the distance. And it has some noise on it. That's not good. But uh, on the bottom there you can see that, uh, that the server position is uh, about 2 below 73 is 2 below 75. So 75 was the center position of the servo. So it's about center, about. And if I move the ball a little bit now to 75, it, sh it stops there. So let's move it. So there it stops. It doesn't stop very well though. Because uh, 